Greg here at MaritimeGardening.com and today I thought I would do a video on how to make partridge berry jam. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, partridge berries are these uh, kind of like a cranberry-like berry um, and uh, they're very common in the province of Newfoundland. I have uh, roots in Newfoundland, my mother's from Newfoundland and uh, they also, you know, you could probably, you can find them in Sweden and you know, places like that, that latitude of the world. Uh, I think in Sweden they call them Logan berries. I think you can even buy the jam uh, at Ikea, I think. Um, and yes, you can buy the jam, but I've always found it uh, way cheaper. You know, that's important to me. And uh, it just tastes better. There's a, the the, the store-bought jam is too sweet. Um, it should be tart. It should be sweet, but tart. Just the right combination of sweet and tart. Um, and you know, there's just nothing like having breakfast with partridge berry jam on it. So. Uh, Yes, there's a store here in Halifax where you can buy it. It's closing really soon, so that's a real shame. I don't really know what I'm going to do to get a steady supply. I wouldn't buy a whole bunch, whole bunch of frozen berries. They have a freezer there full of frozen berries all the time, so whenever I wanted a jam, I'd just go buy some more. Uh, so I went there and bought like 60 bucks worth of frozen berries <laughs> last week. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm going to make some partridge berry jam. It's very easy to make. Uh, patch, par partridge berries are naturally high in pectin, so they're easy to make. And um, the, the jam's easy to make. I mean, the only ingredients are, and they come in about a two cup bag, or I guess it's like a one pound bag. You need four cups of uh, the partridge berry, or sorry, eight cups of partridge berries, four cups of sugar. That's it. Eight cups of partridge berries, four cups of sugar, and that's all you need to make partridge berry jam. So let's go over to the stove here. Let me show how this goes together. It's, it's a very easy jam to make. Anyone that's buying the jam, if you can get a source of the berries, stop buying it and make your own. Get the sweetness just right for you and uh, save a lot of money and enjoy your jam. Let's go. Okay, so I like to use a, a sort of large stainless steel pan. This is about, I don't know, eight inches in diameter. Okay, bigger and flatter the better because you, you're going to bring this to boil, then you're going to simmer it, and then you want to uh, basically dehydrate it a bit, right? So uh, these are frozen and just, just uh, you know, stick them in as is, turn the heat up to high. This is, this is uh, eight cups of the berries. And you need four cups of sugar. I like to add uh, two to start, and then once it gets sort of uh, liquid, I like to add two more to get the four in. It's a dead easy jam to make. I mean, if you're basically in the house watching TV or, you know, just a lazy Saturday morning sort of thing, um, this is the perfect way to kill that time. <laughs> So you get the pan on high and you just you just keep moving stuff around and eventually a, a liquid will form. So right now I'm just moving this around and getting it all heated up until it's a liquid. So I'm going to uh, fast forward this because uh, it's going to take, I don't know, maybe, maybe two to five minutes for this to become sort of liquid. So see you in a couple minutes. All right, so you can see uh, it's starting to get, there's starting to be a little bit of liquid now, right? The berries are starting to um, thaw. The frost is turning into water. And, uh, and the sugar is, you know, gathering, sugar, sugar gathers water to itself. So the sugar is going in with the water. So now I can put the rest of the sugar in. I'm confident that that's, uh, that's gonna work fine. Let's just measure that off. Yeah. Oop, cup number three. Look at that, we're out of sugar. Cup number four. I think there's just enough, just enough in the jar. <laughs> there we go. And uh, I'm sure you can do this jam with less sugar um, if you just cook it longer. Uh, this is just, for me, this is the right balance of tart and sweet. 
It's a uh, partridge berry jam is, I mean, you can make it super sweet if you add more sugar, but um, I think there's a, a balance, a perfect balance of tart and sweet. And kind of like a two to one ratio of berry to sugar for me, for this jam, is the right ratio. All right, so I'm gonna keep, uh, keep poking at this. So the, uh, the camera was off for about four minutes, I think it's about how long that took. And this is on high, so I mean, you can't, you can't leave it alone or it'll burn on, right? So uh, you gotta keep moving it around. You don't have to move it constantly at this stage, um, but you have to be in the room and you have to be sort of just, just giving it a move around every once in a while if you get the camera on high. You could put the camera on low and, and go you know, do something, I suppose, but um, this is the way I do it. I put it on high, and I'm just doing other things in the room and just giving it a stir every once in a while. See you in a few minutes. All right, so it's starting to boil a little bit here, but there's still some frozen chunks in there, so this is not a boil. The instructions are to, uh, you know, once you've got everything uh, thawed out, bring it to a boil and simmer for 30 minutes, and then you jar it up. That's basically <laughs> that's basically it. I mean, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll take it through to the finish here, but um, that's the general idea. So um, at this stage, I like to grab like a, a potato masher just to get it all thawed out. Yeah, so I like to use one of these things that just makes sure that there's no uh, frozen. Also, this helps uh, sort of smush the berries up. I don't like them all whole. I mean, everybody's different. Uh, but uh, I find uh, when it starts to boil, uh, using a masher a little bit just helps to smush the berries up a bit and uh, just get the, uh, for me, the, the texture I want with the jam. You know, you want some whole berries, but uh, I like to have it sort of uh, uh, mushed a bit, <laughs> the best way to put it. So this uh, potato masher just helps to facilitate that. So we're not at a boil yet, but we're really, really close. See you in a couple minutes. Okay, so we've got a good boil going on, you can see here, and you've got to keep it moving, otherwise it'll burn on. But the recipe I use, it says bring to a boil, which I'm at. And then it says reduce temperature and simmer for 30 minutes. So that's what I'm going to do, and you're going to simmer it with the lid off. You're, you're, you're getting some of the water out of this so it'll thicken, right? You know, not, not simmering with the lid on, simmering with the lid off. So for this burner, that's around, it goes, to, it's got numbers, numbers go from 2 to 10, or sorry, from from low to high, and high is 10 and low is 1, so I find around 2 is the right temperature for uh, a no lid simmer. 1 is the right temperature for simmering with the lid on. But every burner is different. The burner to the left of it, uh, it's uh, like the lowest setting possible is a uh, lid off simmer, so every burner is different. So, uh, well, at least with this oven, <laughs> if you got a really good oven, maybe it's all consistent. Uh, anyway. So uh, for 30 minutes, you're gonna let this simmer and you wanna, you know, you're just in the house doing other things and every, every time you walk by this pan, you just move it around a little bit and that's all you do. So I will see you in 30 minutes. Oh, and before I forget, just so you can see, so I'm still at that, that stage of uh, before the 30 minute simmer. So just so you have a sense of how, how liquid the jam is at the beginning, right? It's like that. It's as runny as, you know, chicken soup sort of thing, right? It's totally liquid. It's not thick at all right now. It hasn't thickened in the slightest. Just so you have a sense, right? Sometimes it helps to see these little things. All right, I'll be back in 30 minutes. Just a little side bit while we're waiting for all that to happen. If you watch the video where I was trying to, you know, save the uh, grape jelly, and I didn't really, you know, uh, have the camera running later on, but this is that jelly. It's thick. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering if it worked. It might have even been the case that I could have boiled it for a minute instead of two minutes uh, if you watch that video. But yeah, it's totally thick now. <laughs> totally works. <laughs> okay, so it's been 30 minutes and uh, I don't know how you can, you can tell, but it's, it's uh, notably uh, darker and uh, you know, it doesn't, uh, it probably doesn't appear that much thicker, but it's, it is slightly thicker, okay? Now it's still gonna, it'll continue to thicken as it cools, of course. So now it's time to uh, jar this up. You've got your uh, sterilized jars, and a, a little trick for doing this without making too much of a mess, you know, you bring your, uh, bring your pan over to the counter as close as you can get it, 
and put a, put a cloth in there, right? <laughs> it's just little things you don't, you know, if, you, if you're not taught these things by someone, uh, turn the burner off, uh, yeah, you're going to make a, a lot more of a mess. Uh, you get a little funnel thingy like this. I don't know where to buy these. I got this at a yard sale. Both of the ones I own I got at yard sales. Uh, then you just use your uh, thing and, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I basically fill it up like this until I can't hold it anymore in my hand because <laughs> it's too hot. This is a sterilized mason jar, right? At some point this is going to get too hot for me to hold and I have to set it down. This is the cleanest way to do it. There we go. Now you get the other jar, get the other jar ready, and do a quick, uh, quick switch over, nice and clean. Right, and you can see I filled this right to the base of the neck. Right. Let's do the next one. I like to use these larger jars. Um, you know, there's a uh, different size jars, right? Got this size, got this size, little tiny one. This is like, a, I don't know, I think this is 250 mil, this is 125 mil, like half a cup. And the big one there is like a two cup. So it's a one cup, half cup, two cup jar. This is the size I would put jam in to give to someone as a gift. The smallest one possible. <laughs> if, if My rule of thumb for giving jam, jam as a gift is I give them one of these. And if they come back to me and say, oh my God, that was the best jam I ever had. That was so good. Everybody loved it. Then I'll give them one of these the next year. <laughs> right? And if uh, year after year after year I have a relationship with those people and they love the jam and they're always raving about it, maybe, maybe they'll earn their way up to one of these babies. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's my general theory about uh, gift giving. Nothing worse than, you know, you give, and it takes time and effort and costs some money. Uh, to make jam. You give someone jam and they never hear a thing back. Uh, well, I'm not giving that person, you know, give them one of these. If they don't, you don't hear anything back from them, never give them that jam again. Maybe never even give them jam again. <laughs> don't, give, don't give somebody they don't want, right? Uh, so uh, you'll be able to tell, you know, if people uh, really like, like it, right? Or if they're just being polite or whatever, right? So uh, anyway, just a little advice that uh, uh, it's better to learn it that way than the hard way is to put uh, a lot of time and energy into making uh, jam and giving it as a gift, and it is a very thoughtful gift. But if the person you're giving it to uh, doesn't like it, then it's probably just an annoying gift. And it's certainly going to be annoying to you because you put your time and resources into preparing that, right? Yeah. Oh, there's another one. Now, in terms of uh, preserving, you know, if you if you're gonna put these in a, um, if you're gonna now I have to sort of tilt it to get the stuff out. If you're gonna put these uh, in a in a pantry in a cupboard or something like that, you're, if you're gonna store them at room temperature, then you need to you know boil them boil the jars with the lids on and that whole canning process. I'm not gonna go through that in this video because um, it's just it's just long and tedious and there's so, there's tons of videos on YouTube. On how to do that so it doesn't really make any sense for, for me to walk you through that. Uh, there's plenty of good videos on that. Now this 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 uh, last jar isn't isn't properly full so I'm using an unsterilized spatula here but uh, it doesn't matter because this is just going in the fridge right uh, you know so uh, and this will keep quite a while in the fridge I'm not going to say how long so I don't want to be sued by anybody but Keeps quite a while in the fridge. Someone will say, "Oh, you know, two two weeks or whatever." But what, whatever. You, you, if you're a regular jam eater, you know how long jam keeps. I'm not going to put a date on it. Uh, anyway, this one's going in the fridge. Okay. Uh, these two will have to be canned if they're going to be stored at room temperature, or you can just, you know, if you've left enough space for expansion, you can just put a lid on these and stick them in the freezer. <laughs> Take them out, you know. Leave all these jams. We're going to put the lid on and leave them on the counter. Over, you know. After these two are, um, if you're going to vacuum seal them, if you're going to can them, after you've done that, you're going to leave them on the counter overnight. Um, but if, even if you're going to put them in the freezer, put the lid on, leave them on the counter overnight. Or if you're going to put them in the fridge, put the lid, lid on, leave them on the counter overnight. That'll just uh, assist that whole uh, thickening process. Um, 
But yeah, if you don't feel like canning these, because it takes a bit of time, and if you got the room in your freezer, just put the lid on, stick them in your freezer once they've rested overnight. All right, so this is the amount of jam we made from that, from um, eight cups of partridge berries and four cups of sugar. We got one, two, three, four, five cups of jam, right? And uh, for the linen, you know, you put the, uh, they are all sterilized, right? Put those on. Put these on, not too tight, you know, uh, depending on your hand strength, right? You don't want to, at this stage, you don't want to crank these on because you want um, uh, the, the physics to seal them, right? So my rule of thumb is I just sort of hold, I hold the, the lid between my thumb and my forefinger because I can only tighten it so much and just till it feels snug. That's all I do and instead of using your whole hand, right? Just thumb and forefinger and snug. That's it. You've made a good seal between the, you know, the rubber on the bottom of the uh, lid and the glass and uh, a natural vacuum will form there and it'll seal up. I'm just using a plastic lid for the one that's going in the fridge, right? Because I'm not sterilizing this. I mean, it's, everything's clean, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's going to be kept cold and uh, it'll be totally fine. I really like these plastic lids. You know, uh, one thing I do, just I'm just adding some extra tidbits here, but uh, I use the metal lids for storing, you know, for putting in the freezer and all that sort of stuff. Um, but once I take them out of the freezer or out of storage and I use them in my fridge, I take these and clean them and dry them off and switch to the plastic. And you'll find these, these things rust, right? So you'll find you get way more uses out of them if uh, you don't use them in the fridge with these lids on, right? Because it's getting you know, basically taken out of the fridge, put it in the fridge, take it out of the fridge, put it in the fridge, you're getting condensation, it's gonna rust. Um, and you're gonna throw a lot of these rings away and you're gonna throw a lot of these lids away, uh, especially the rings. The lids are very cheap and easy to replace, but for some reason, I can only ever seem to find the lids with the rings. I can never just seem to buy rings. So I've got a ridiculous amount of uh, uh, lids and hardly any rings because uh, if, when I was learning all of this stuff, I would rust out my rings all the time from, you know, just, just not really knowing what I was doing. So, anyway, that's partially berry jam. It's a delicious tart. Um, you know, if you like that sort of thing, uh, you know, so nice to have uh, for um, with your toast or to make little, uh, you know, little tarts, little tiny pies, that sort of thing. Uh, partridge berry jam, just a wonderful uh, sort of traditional uh, food from this part of the world, especially Newfoundland. Uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGarden.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.